Are you guys ready for the show to begin? Yeah. All right. Coming all the way from Madison to tell you guys some jokes. Coming up to the stage, we have Tim Finnegan. What up, people? How y'all doing tonight? All right, well, that's what I like to hear. Well, my name's Tim Finnegan, and tonight I'd like to get into some comedy for you guys about Valentine's Day. Now, that's that fucking awesome time of year. Hey. Now, I'd like to tell you guys a fucking story about a time when I knew a guy named Sam Baldwin. I worked with him. You know, we worked in Chicago. We worked in an office building, and we had fucking awesome times together. We told jokes, made some you know, good times together. We were getting to know each other pretty well. And then I got to know his son, Jonah, too. He's a fucking hilarious dude, too. So, But yeah, when I was working with Sam Baldwin, we were working in a building in Chicago, and uh, one thing that went on was, um, I found out later, Sam was going through a lot, you know, when he unexpectedly lost his wife, and so he left his job and he moved to Seattle, and um, he was, wasn't sleeping very well in Seattle, but I moved out there, you know, just right after he did, and I still wanted to, you know, stay connected with him and his son Jonah, um, and so he was going through a lot, he thought moving to Seattle would help, you know, turn his life around and get it back together, but he was still kind of grieving when he, even when he was in Seattle. So when I was out that way, um, I was, sometimes I watched over Jonah and other than I learned my way around Seattle when I was there. But there was one night, it was on Christmas Eve, it was when I was driving home from Christmas Eve Mass at my church. I tuned into the radio, I turned the radio on and I heard Jonah on a radio show. He was on a show directed by Dr. Marsha Fieldstone and the point of the show was dreams, wishes, and hopes for the new year. And Jonah was talking on the show and he was wishing uh, for his dad to find a new wife. Um, and I'm like, holy shit, is that Jonah? And I'm like, he's sounding fucking awesome on the radio. So I was listening to the story, and and so Jonah pretty much told his story on the radio about um, what, what's been going on, and he puts his father Sam on the radio, and his father Sam talked about what he's been going through and all that, and a lot of people around the United States tuned in and listened, so it was fucking awesome, and... and it was right after the radio show ended that there were some women um, across the United States who sent letters to Sam in Seattle and wanted to meet him and get to learn who he is. Uh, and it was fucking awesome that there were so many people tuning into the show. So uh, you know, when I was in Seattle, you know, at Sam's house watching over Jonah at times, Jonah got all the letters and he read a lot of letters. And one letter in particular was from someone named Annie Reed who happens to live in Baltimore. So um, uh, Jonah opened the letter and I agreed with him too. It's like, hey. Dad, yeah, you, you should meet this you know, this lady, Annie. She, she seems like she wants to meet you. I'm like, well, and Sam said, no, I'm not going all the way out to Baltimore to meet some lunatic. That's too far away. I, and Sam just wanted to live someone who, to date someone who lived close by in Seattle. So he was on a date with someone in Victoria one night, and but uh, Jonah wasn't happy that he was going on a date with another woman. He really wanted Sam to meet Annie. So you know, we kept Sam, um, Jonah and I kept trying to convince Sam to go out uh, to Baltimore, and there was even a letter, another letter that Annie Reed wrote saying, hey, it's Valentine's Day weekend, why don't you meet me at the top of the Empire State Building? I'm like, this is your chance, Sam, you gotta do it. And Sam's like, no, I can't do that shit. She moves too far away. I'm like, you never know, you lose 100% of your chance uh, of any shots you don't take. So, but he still didn't want to listen. So then what happened was Jonah went to his friend Jessica's house and Jessica booked him a flight to New York that he didn't tell anyone about. So Jonah, the eight-year-old boy, got on a plane by himself, flew to New York, and he went to the Empire State Building tried to look for Annie, and, um, and I was supposed to go over to Sam's house to uh, find uh, Jonah um, and watch over him, but I didn't know where Jonah was, and Sam didn't know where he was, and I'm like, well, where the fuck is Jonah? And so then Sam and I went to Jessica's house, and we like, we're looking for Jonah, do you know where he is? And Jessica said, and why? And I'm like, what is that? She's, and the dad was like, no way. I'm like, no, no, that's not it, that's NW. And then Jessica said, New York, he's on his way to New York. I'm like, what the fuck? How the fuck would Jonah? get on a plane to New York and they said when his flight left so then Sam and I hopped on a flight we flew to New York and then when we got to the Empire State Building we found Jonah and we reunited with him I'm like I'm glad, I'm glad we found you I was worried we lost you so then you know Jonah Sam and I went down the elevator and we got back to the first floor but then Annie went up the elevator and she's still stuck with the plan of going to the Empire State Building she's like I need to meet this man if I don't try I'll never know and, and the guy at the Empire State Building is like yeah you seem like you're referencing um, an affair 
to remember, and that's my wife's favorite. So, so then Annie went uh, to the top of the Empire State Building, and then when Jonah realized he left his backpack at the top of the Empire State Building, he, Sam, and I went back up, and then that was when we found Annie, and Sam introduced himself to Annie, and they connected, and it made Jonah and I very happy, and then we, you know, uh, Sam offered Annie his hand, like, let's go, and, and she listened, and then we got in the elevator, and Jonah and I had a huge smile on our face when Sam found the love of his life. So that's pretty much our, my story about how I was able to help my friend Sam find a new love in his life at this time of year of Valentine's Day. That's my time. Thank you for watching tonight. Happy Valentine's Day, and you guys have a wonderful